So, Shannon, after what you saw last night, will Odell and the Rams beat Tom Brady and the Bucks in the divisional round next weekend? What a matchup. I believe, Skip, I believe they will. Um, I think we, this was the second week two wow. matchup, and we saw what Stafford did when they were in SoFi. Guys played really well, and we, I, I always felt that this was going to, they were going to have to see each other. They were going to determine each other's playoff fate, and somebody's going to put make someone go home. But I like this matchup. I like what the Rams can do defensively. They can generate pressure with their front four without having to sacrifice their back end. Now, a lot's going to be contingent, Skip. How healthy is Tristan Wirth and Ryan Jensen? Now, Tristan Wirth seems to be probably more iffy. Uh, B.A. said yesterday this thing's going to come down to a game time going to take it up to the, the, the 18th hour to give him every opportunity to be able to play because if he can't play, that means Leonard Floyd, that means Vaughn Miller, and sometimes they'll even bump Aaron Donald out to an end, and he's going to go against the backup. And the backup, if I'm not mistaken, Skip, got injured in that game uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday. So that's going to be he a did. huge uh, uh, problem. Okay, that's going to be a huge problem if they're missing those two offensive linemen. But I like what they can do offensively. They're going to spread the ball around because you saw what Arizona did. They're like, we are not letting Cooper Cup get 14, 15 catches today. And I thought Matthew Stafford did a great job of finding Odell, of finding Higby. And then when they started, like, oh, okay, these other guys, and then Cooper Cup made his catches when given the opportunity. I like the two-headed monster that they have with Cam Akers. Skip, that's a miracle. I've never heard of it. When I heard this guy was being activated after tearing on Achilles in January, I said, acting for what? He ain't playing. Skip, six months, 173 days. He tore his Achilles in July. He's playing meaningful yeah. minutes on a playoff team in the playoffs. We know what Sony Michelle can do because, Skip, we saw him against the Ram teams in the Super Bowl go 400 yards. So we know he's battle-tested yep. and can run the football. This is going to be a very yep. good game. I think Tom Brady thought that there was a great chance they would see this team again at some point. I think Sean McVay thought he was, they would see this team again down the line at some point, and here we are. But the Rams have the type of football team that can go to Tampa and beat Tampa. Tampa knows that. They'll be on their best behavior. But you get, it all starts with what can they do with number 12? Can they get him off of that spot? It's a 7 by 9 it's the pocket, nine yards deep, seven yards wide. Can you get him off that spot and force him to move left, force him to move right? But, Skip, you know how they want to do it. He got the ball out in, I think, 2.1 seconds, they said, which is the fastest, this, the fastest since 2016, 2017. Maybe when they played the Chargers. Skip, you remember that playoff game against the Chargers when Joy Bosa said, I can't get there because every time I get there, it's, the ball's gone. That's what they're going to try to do. So you're going to have to disrupt some receivers, but you're going to have to give the, offense, the defensive line a chance to get there. And that job would be made a lot easier if Worth and Jensen are not in that starting lineup. But I like the Rams' chances. And we're going to have a lot of do betting on this game because I know you're going to try to get your little eight cases back. But hey, I think we might have went to nine, Skip. I think we might have went to nine. No, eight. It was eight. Last week, I think we eight, went to nine. I think we went to nine. We got to tape. <laughs> no, we got to pull the tape. It was eight because you choked on nine because you didn't have that kind of guts to bet against my Dallas Cowboys. Okay, I'm not going to laugh at anything you just said about Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. and company in Tampa Bay. But I am going to warn you once more, there's one man in sports I do not bet against when the money gets pushed to the middle of the table, and that's number 12 in Tampa Bay. Now, you have me on the run. You have me backed up against the wall. You got Brady backed up against the wall because he is down his top two targets from the year. There's obviously no more A.B., and there's obviously no more Chris Godwin. I don't know if playoff Lenny, as in Leonard Fournette, is going to be able to go on his hamstring. I don't know and doubt that Rojo, Ronald Jones, is going to be able to go. So all of a sudden, you got me again because you got Brady backed up against the wall without two-thirds of his rushing attack that was so predominant last year down the stretch as they rolled to the Super Bowl. And you got me again because the Rams are a nemesis for Brady and company. 
not exactly in the same way that New Orleans has been a nemesis, but it's close. Because, as you know, it was last year on November 23rd, on Monday Night Football, that the Rams went to Tampa with Jared Goff at quarterback mm -hmm. and won that game 27 to 24. And they were pretty tough on Brady that night. He did not have a great night. He had a QBR of 49, which is a notch below average. And he threw for only 216, two touchdowns, two interceptions. And Jared Goff outplayed him with the QBR of 80. Again, 27 to mm -hmm. 24 in that game. Then we fast forward to this year, September 26th, out here, Southern California at SoFi. The Rams won 34 to 24. They sacked Brady three times. He did throw for a ton of yards because he ended up throwing for 432 yards, but he did not have a great QBR. He, he had a 63, which is not terrible, but it, it, it's not Brady-esque. So you can say that the Rams have the Bucks number because I'm going to give you the combined rush yards in those two games. In the first, uh, th this game this year, the Bucks rushed 13 times for a grand total of 35 yards, and the leading rusher was Tom Brady with three carries for 14 <laughs> yards. In that game last right. year, it, it was even worse. It was 18 carries for 42 yards. So I'm going to combine those and tell you that in those two games, the Buccaneers averaged 2.5 yards per carry. Well, you don't think that's going to heap more and more pressure on the 44-year-old quarterback? who might not have his right tackle for this game against a hellacious pass rush led by the guy you say is one of the greatest defensive players ever and the current best yep. defensive player ever, obviously, in Aaron Donald. Yep. So you got yeah. me, you got me, you got me. And I, I also would like to remind everybody, because I guarantee you Brady's going to be looking at this video this week, that the killer play in this year's game on September 26th at SoFi came early in the third quarter. This throw went for 75 yards to Deshaun Jackson, who is no longer a Ram, now replaced effectively by Odell Beckham Jr. If we could mm -hmm. see the throw that just lit up the afternoon and had Coach McYay, oh, we don't have it. I'm sorry, I thought we did have it. But I... Remember, okay. Coach McYay, as in Coach McVay, ran yeah. all the way down the sideline, right trailing the, the play, ran all the way up the tunnel to congratulate Deshaun for that 75-yard catch that made it 21-7 mm -hmm. to seven Rams, and it broke it open. And do I need to remind right. you that coming off the field at halftime, Coach McYay was butt-slapping everybody, just going nuts like they were about to win the Super Bowl over Brady and company when it was 14 to seven. And again, they had their way in that game. They basically had their way in that game a year ago at Tampa. But I'm gonna remind you what happened at Breeze last year when, when you thought that, my God, New Orleans has got Brady's number. Remember with the number they did on Brady at Tampa in that yeah. Sunday night game during the regular season last year. It was a debacle of a disaster. Worst game I've ever seen Tom Brady play. And he turns it around with a lot of help from his defense. And what was it? Three interceptions and another turnover, a, a fumble loss by Jerry Cook. And a fumble Cook. by Jerry Cook. Yep, it was four turnovers. Yeah. Okay. All right. I did see the Tampa defense take off as in playoff launch, as in Super Bowl launch this past Sunday against Philadelphia. So I think they will be ready. I'm still going to pick the GOAT because I don't bet against the GOAT in games like this, but I give you every point you just made, and I will end with one last one. A year ago, at Tampa on that Monday night, Robert Woods mm -hmm. got 15 targets. 15 targets. That's A-B kind of feeding, force feeding, right? 15 targets, mm -hmm. caught 12 for 120 now, Cooper Cup had a big night, too. He caught 11 for 145. But Robert Woods, 12 for 130. Obviously, he is gone, not forgotten, but he is also being replaced by Odell Beckham Jr., who did in single right. coverage last night have a pretty nice game. He caught four balls for 54, right. including that big 31-yarder. And he did catch the fade route for the touchdown right, on that kid, Marco um, Wilson, the rookie fourth-round pick Wilson. from Florida. I think we have that. Do, do we have the fade route touchdown? Here we go. 
Okay, he gets single coverage, and to Matt Stafford's credit, he just throws it up. Well, Odell can still catch it. I, I don't think he's near what right. he used to be in his first two years with the Giants, but that was a sweet throw and a very nice catch. Got his feet down, and again, he's on a fourth-round rookie, and he took advantage. And he gets nothing but what? single coverage because that's what's going to happen when Cooper Cup's on the other side. Well, that's what happened, Skip, and that's what you're going to have to take advantage of, Skip. And I tell people this all the time. When I went to Baltimore, I knew I wasn't going to get the same opportunities that I got in Denver. First of all, I didn't have the same level of quarterback, and that was not how we are going to win. So you just have to make the most of your opportunity when the opportunity presents itself. Odell understands. Now, for the most part, now, this, Skip, this might be a totally different situation. He gets single coverage, and they try to roll coverage to Cooper Cup. He's going to have to win. Yep. He's going to get a lot. He, there's a potential for him to get a lot more footballs this week than he has at any point in time in his Rams career. I believe he'll be up to the challenge because what Odell can still do, Skip, he still has that lateral quickness. He still can dot, 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 that phone booth uh, step. And yep. he's a high point ball catcher. He's, a, he's not a body catcher. He's a hand catcher. So that's why somebody at his size does a great job on fade routes because he high points the ball as well as anybody in football. And especially for his size, he might be the best at it because Odell might be six foot tall, but he can high point the ball, has great athleticism. Skip, if anybody can run a game without a run game, it's Tom Brady. Because we see, we know, we saw down 28-3, Skip, in the Super Bowl. The run game was virtually yep. known. He's like, I don't even want a run game. All you're doing is just... Nope. Just let me stay in this rhythm because you're going to break my rhythm by making me hand the ball off. So if anybody's equipped to handle a situation where some of their running their running game might be less than ideal, it's Tom Brady. Yeah. But the Rams match up really well against this team. But, Skip, you know all they playoff do. games come down to what? Turnovers. And that's what happened. New Orleans had the game in control until Drew started they turning did. the ball over and then Jerry Cook. They were about to go up 14, Skip, maybe t at least 10. They were. Because they had gotten in field goal range, yeah. maybe 14. And then uh, 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 White, uh, Junior makes that great play, and Tom goes down, gets a he touchdown, did. and they don't look back after that. So the Rams are going to – Matthew Stafford is going to have to do a great job of taking care of the football. But, Skip, this is why they, last night you saw why they went and got Vaughn Miller. He's not the Vaughn from Super Bowl 50. But if you single him – he still can bend the edge on you and get home. Yep. And it's a lot yep. easier to, 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 to get to Tom because you know Tom is going to be there. It's hard to, to, to get to Kyler Murray because, Skip, you can't run past him. You run past him, he's going to jump out the window and go. So you got to, you know, once you get even with him, you got to try to bend the pocket. It's going to be very interesting to see Leonard Floyd, A'shaun uh, uh, Robinson, Aaron Donald, yep. Vaughn Miller, what is Raheem Mathis, uh, uh, more Raheem, Ma Raheem yep. going to do to put pressure on Tom Brady without sacrificing that back end? I hear you. I, I fear it for Tom. Again, he went down three times against the Rams this year on September 26th. And mm -hmm. yet, last night, Kyler Murray, I'm a big fan. We're going to talk about his future later in the show. He played simply the skill. single worst game I've ever seen him play. Ever, ever. It wasn't even close. I've watched him a lot of games. Uh, I've even watched a lot of his high school games in which he never lost in the state of Texas. And I don't yeah. know what got into him or out of him last night, but he was immediately out of rhythm, out of sync. He lost his poise, and he lost his accuracy. I've never seen him stink as much as he stunk last night. So that contributed mm -hmm. to the downfall. And then the Rams hammered away with Sony and Cam Akers. And by the way, congrats to Dr. Elitraj. I know you know him, Neil Elitraj, for, for getting him mm -hmm. back on that torn to kill. I don't know how he did it, but it's it's a miracle. And skip, I don't need but to skip. Again, okay, but 140 yards rushing against Arizona. Can they get 140 against Tampa? I doubt it. So, once again, well, I'm back to what I told you from the start. Go ahead. I don't know if they need that many. I don't know if they need 140. 
Can they get to 100? Skip, they just need to be in a situation where the Bucs can't just pin their ears back. A lot of times when you're playing a team that can rush the passer like the Rams, like Tampa can, you run the football just so they can have to hold in there just for an extra second. I just don't want you flying off the ball, pinning your ears back, coming after my quarterback. I just want to have you to think about it. Man, they might run that draw here. Man, what if they hit this draw? What? What? I just want to make you think about that for just a second. And that's what you're going to have to do. do can they get one for it against Tampa? Probably not. But can I put that seed in your mind where you're just not flying off the ball? Okay. Can I plant this seed or replant it in the back of your psyche? I still okay. don't trust Matthew Stafford in a playoff game. I know he finally broke through and won one last night. I think it was the equivalent of Tampa beating Philadelphia. I think it was pretty easy, maybe too easy. And ultimately, this game will come down to, will Brady make that one throw or will Matt Stafford make that one throw or one yeah. big mistake? My money's Correct. on Brady. You can have Matt yeah. Stafford all day and all night, and good luck. Well, Skip, it would be hard to pick against Brady making, making a mistake because generally over the course of his career in playoff moments, he has not made a lo lot of mistakes. You probably have to go once every six or seven games to find him that make a mistake that costs his team, considering he's only lost 11 playoff games in his illustrious 22-year career, lets you know he doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. He's normally not the reason why they lose a game. They've lost, obviously, 11 playoff losses. But for the most part, he's not the reason why they lose. Yes, he's made a mistake. They've gotten picked off. But I'm with you on that one. I'm not betting no money says, you know what? It's going to be Tom Brady that makes the mistake that cost his team the game. It could happen. Yeah. But hmm. that yeah, would shock a lot of Rams people are if going it to did win. happen. Okay. You're already on the record. The Rams are going to pull this off. I'm picking, yeah. Yeah, yeah Skip, I picked the Rams. I told, I told you. Uh, uh, in the, now, I would have liked it better had the Rams lost the first time because I don't like teams that beat the team the first time. Kind of like Georgia, <laughs> Alabama, Skip. Because oh, the team that, that lost the game, sure. Skip, we, we, we can go back and look at the reason why we lost the game where the team that won says they're not looking at some of the things that could have tripped them up. They're just looking at, oh, we won and look at what we did. But I, I'm going to have faith in uh, Sean McVay. I'm going to have faith okay. in uh, and Matthew Stafford that they get it, they get it done. They play su Ooh. Sunday. I think they play Sunday. Yeah. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.